So the Prisma team came out with a new tool called GraphQL Gen. Now the purpose of this is to help you generate types for your backend code in GraphQL. So this is going to generate types for your resolvers so you know what the arguments and the return values should be. Now this is going to support a variety of languages, but right now it only supports TypeScript and that's what we're going to take a look at today. Now it works very well with Prisma itself, but you don't have to use it if you don't want to. So right here, we're going to try out the sample project, and we can do that by running npm init. So we're going to copy this, and I'm just going to run that. And this is going to just create us a beginner project, and it's going to create some types for us with GraphQL Gen. Now, when you cd into that, I have it up over here already. We're going to have a couple of different files that it creates for us. So there's going to be this configuration file called graphqlgen.yaml, which we'll talk about in a second. And if we look at the source code, we have an index file. This is a GraphQL Yoga server that we're starting up here. And the beginning part of the server, the boilerplate, just uses uh, data and memory. So we're just having an array here that we're modifying. And we can take a look at the schema. We have some drafts, some posts, and a user. So a few different types here. Um, and then if we take a look at the resolvers themselves, they are over here. And basically, they already created a type. They regenerated some types and we're passing the type in right here. And so what that allows us to do is if we come back over to our schema, we'll notice our first query up here expects an argument ID passed in the types ID and it returns a post. So now my query resolver over here for post, I know that this argument here, if I destructure and then I say, uh, controlled in space, it's going to know that I have to have an ID in this object where it knows that there is one thanks to the type definitions and I can see that it's a string if I hover over it and I can pass that in there. And the same thing goes with my return values here. So right now I'm returning a post um, but if I want to return something else it's going to be mad at me because I'm returning the wrong values uh, and we can see that here. So it is a number when it ex expects a promise or null. Uh, for posts. So let's get rid of that and return that back. So how does it do this? How can we add our own resolver here? So let's go ahead and add a new schema or not new schema, but let's create a new type underneath this. So I'm going to create a type here called pet and I'm going to give it a name, which is going to be a string. And I'm also going to give it an age, which is a, let's call it an int. And I'm going to create a new mutation here called create pet. It's going to take a name, which is a string, and an age, which is an int, and it's going to return a pet. So now that I created this mutation right here, I would like to generate the uh, mutation, the resolver for it. So what I'm going to do is tell it in my GraphQL gen basically some stuff. So what we need to tell GraphQL Gen to be able to generate types for us is a few things. So to start off, we specify the language and where our schema is at. So that's our schema.graphql. The second part over here is we specify the context object. So what is this? Well, over here, you'll notice in our GraphQL server, we pass in a context or we're creating a context. In this case, it is a data that we're passing in a data object. And so if I look at the types over here, we created an interface, well they created an interface for us called context and it has the type data. So it matches what the context type should be. Um, so that is what we're specifying here. So look inside the types folder or the types file and look for a type called context. So that's gonna be the one to use for the context. And here we're specifying where you can find some types. We're gonna talk more about this in a second. So what that is. And then here, the file that it wants to output. So it's generating all this stuff in source generated. And we're going to see this in a second, what it generates for us when we run this. Um, and then lastly, over here, this is kind of a configuration of what you want these temp resolvers to look like. And we'll talk about what that is in a second as well. So let's go ahead and run yarn generate. Um, and actually, let me just make sure I'm in the project directory. Here we go. And I'm going to say yarn generate. And you'll notice we actually have an error when we try to run this. And the reason for that is I actually don't have a type over here. So over here, I need to have a type that matches my schema. 
So I have a GraphQL schema, so I have the type pet over here. So I need to have the TypeScript definition for that. So in this case, it actually will create that automatically for me, which is nice. So I can just copy that and paste it in here. And we want to export it because it's going to use these types um, in the generated code, which we'll look at in a second. Um, so now I can run this again, and it's going to go ahead and generate the types for us. So now if we look at this generated folder over here, there's two things to take a look at. We'll start with this GraphQL generated. And what this is, is it's all the TypeScript types, and we can see the resolvers right here. Um, and you can see the values that they expect in and the return values you pass out. Um, and if we look, we can search for our pet. Um, and we can see here the arguments we're expecting to pass into the pet. So a name, which is a string, and age, which is a number. Um, so perfect, that's exactly what we want. So it generates those for us. And we can also, somewhere in here, we'll also have, here's our create pet resolver. So that's nice. So in this temp resolvers, if we come, we'll notice we have a new one called pet and it has some default resolvers. Um, but the thing I want to take is over here. So this is a mutation. So this has some default things. We can copy this and this is just to start off with. So I'm going to copy this, come over to my resolvers, add a new mutation. And you'll notice right here, my mutation is mad at me. And why it's mad at me is it expects a type here. And if I hit control space, it expects me to have a create pet type. So that's pretty nice. So it actually checks and knows I should be passing that in. So now here's my create pet and I'm open to add any implementation that I want. Um, but if I just destructure this, it's gonna know what types I, it has there. So an age and a name. And now I can do whatever I want. I can create a pet here um, and whatever logic I wanna do for that. And then I can return a object that is the pet and I know that's an age and a name so that's how I can do that so it's pretty nice the idea of it is you basically have full TypeScript types checking both the arguments the parent and the context itself and then the value that you return